Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and here are the latest developments from the world of medicine. Dog assisted interventions which lead to lower stress levels in children. As per a new study published in the Open Access Journal PLOS One, dog assisted interventions can significantly lead to lower stress in children both with and without special needs. The researchers tracked the levels of the stress hormone cortisol in the saliva of 105 8 to 9 year olds in four mainstream schools as well as 44 similarly aged children from seven special education needs schools. The children were randomly stratified into three groups. First was a dog group, a relaxation group or the control group. In the dog group, the participants interacted for about 20 minutes with a trained dog and a handler. The meditation group involved a 20 minute of relaxation session and sessions were carried out twice a week for four weeks. It was then found that the dog interventions led to significantly lower cortisol levels in children in both the mainstream as well as the special needs schools. In mainstream schools, the children in the control as well as in the relaxation groups had an increase in their mean salivary cortisol levels over the course of the school term. In addition, their cortisol levels were on an average lower immediately after each dog session, while for children with special needs, Similar patterns were seen with decrease in the cortisol after dog group interventions. The authors hence concluded that dog interventions can successfully attenuate the stress levels in school children. How this epilepsy and migraine drug causes birth defects. Valproic acid, we all know, is a well-known drug which is used to treat epilepsy, migraine and bipolar disorders and it can cause birth defects when taken during pregnancy. Now, a study which was published in the PLOS Biology Journal, it reveals one reason why, that being that valproic acid puts some cells of the developing nervous system into senescence, which is a kind of a halted state that keeps them from growing and dividing correctly. In this new study, the researchers used both the human organoids, that is three-dimensional clusters of human cells grown in the lab, as well as mice to study the embryonic exposure to valproic acid. They discovered that VPA, it induces the cellular senescence in the neuroepithelial cells, which are the stem cells that give rise to the central nervous system. Hence, the authors said that the work is one of the first to associate cellular senescence with the developmental defects and overall the discovery that atypical activation of senescence in the embryo can even perturb the development. This raises the intriguing possibility that it may also contribute to defects in developmental contexts beyond those that are being studied. Five new insights into the COVID-19 pandemic's effects on heating and health. New studies presented at the Nutrition 2022 examine the causes and the effects of COVID-19 related food insecurity, how the pandemic affected breastfeeding practices and many more. Firstly, IFI talk about the internet access and food security in older adults. In a new study, the researchers sought to find out how technology use and access to internet are related to food security at risk. The analysis revealed that food insecurity in the older age group during the COVID-19 pandemic was associated with poorer social and mental well-being and even less access to the internet. These findings did suggest that technology access should be considered when developing interventions to address food insecurity for elderly population. Next is the breastfeeding experiences during stay-at-home orders. The investigators explored how the COVID-19 pandemic may have impacted the mother's role and breastfeeding practices. The survey results revealed that some mothers found that the extra time at home facilitated a bond much better between them and their baby, resulting in breastfeeding which is longer than eventually planned. However, many mothers even complained, rather reported, that the COVID-19 pandemic was very stressful. And in some cases, mothers even reported low milk supply due to that amount of stress. The next insight that is given is giving birth during the pandemic. The researchers assessed anxiety, confusion and breastfeeding self-efficacy. All these a mother's perception of her ability to breastfeed among the mothers who gave birth during the pandemic. 
the researchers did find that mothers in the study were able to maintain planned infant feeding decisions and retained high breastfeeding self efficacy despite the continuing covid-19 pandemic then is the food insecurity and distress around managing diabetes The researchers analyzed associations between food insecurity and diabetes distress related to COVID-19 in adults with pre-diabetes or undergoing a diabetes condition. The study was based on a national web-based survey administered to low-income adults. Diabetes distress was measured by assessing the emotional burden, physician-related distress, self-management-related distress, and even the interpersonal distress. Based on these findings, the researchers said that the healthcare providers should screen for diabetes distress and also connect patients to resources to help manage food and mental health needs. Lastly is the vitamin A levels in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. Vitamin A plays a key role in regulating the immune system, development of lung tissue and even repair of infection related damage. Now to better understand its potential role in COVID-19, the researchers compared vitamin A blood plasma levels in critically ill and those recovering with COVID-19. They found that those who were critically ill patients in the acute phase of COVID-19, they showed significant decrease in the total vitamin A as well as the RBP bound levels compared to patients who were still recovering. So to summarize all these five aspects detailed how COVID-19 pandemic affected our health the impact of these highly processed foods especially in children a new study found that children aged 3 to 5 years who consumed more of ultra processed foods had poorer locomotor skills than children who consumed less of these foods it also showed lower cardiovascular fitness in 12 to 15 year olds who consumed more of such foods Healthy dietary and exercise behaviors are established at a very young age. So the findings did point to the need to educate the families about cost-effective ways to reduce the consumption of ultra-processed food to help decrease the risk for developing heart conditions in adulthood. This survey it used interviews and fitness tests to collect the data on physical activity, the fitness levels as well as the food intake for more than 1500 children aged 3 to 15 years. Ultra processed foods were identified which categorizes the food and beverages items according to the level of food processing. The analysis revealed that children with the lowest locomotor development consumed 273 calories more per day of ultra processed foods than children with the highest locomotor development scores the study also showed that teens and preteens with good cardiovascular fitness consumed 226 fewer calories daily from ultra processed foods than those who did not have any healthy cardiovascular fitness hence a better understanding of how and when these foods are consumed could help inform the future interventions designed to encourage healthy eating that's all for today stay tuned to medical dialogues for latest updates never miss a medical update from medical dialogues like subscribe and press the bell icon